What are you doing? Hey! Um, uh, thought I'd just about chop off a little piece of this pipe. I got a lot of questions on my last video uh, about the chop saw. I, I guess you know, a lot of guys haven't seen this kind of a, of a cold cut saw. And I thought, well, let me show you around this just real quick so you guys can see what this thing is all about. So I guess most guys are familiar with the abrasive blade that you get on most of the chop saws. Uh, th this one is actually for a, a 10 inch chop saw. This is a 14, but I like to use these on my, my big handheld grinder for when I got to get out, away from the chop saw a little. But the problem I found with these is if you really get to hogging with it, if you get to push with them a little too hard, they flex a little bit. And what happens is you wind up with a curve in your cut. You don't wind up with a perfectly straight cut. So this guy actually has a metal blade. It has a slightly different pitch on the teeth itself. This is one just back from the saw sharpening plate. So it's got the little wax coating around it to help protect the teeth. And I just pulled off a little bit so you can see what was going on here. So what they do is they put just a little bit different pitch on the blade, a little different angle, you know, a little on the top, a little on the sides, and it just helps it cut the metal better. So this is a 102 tooth blade, as opposed to the, I remember right, 79 that I've got over here. And this one is more for the harder metals, where this is for the soft, you know, like a, a steel, or for like aluminum or something like that. So you, know, you have the option of having different teeth for the different types of metal that you have to cut. Much straighter, much cleaner, you know, nice, nice, nice cut. The only drawback is the blades can run anywhere from about, uh, about $100, you know, about $80 I think is the cheapest one, up to a little over $200 a blade. But the nice thing is you get many, 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 many sharpenings on, the, on one blade before it's either worn out and you know, just so bad that you can't resharpen it. Or they can go in and literally uh, weld new teeth in it. So if you hit something hard, you know, if, if you get a little careless with it, you chip a tooth or break off the tooth, you can just have that one tooth fixed and then resharpen. And then you save a blade. You know, where with the abrasive blades, when they wear out, they throw them away. Or, like I do, if they get too small for this, or you know, my, gr my big grinder, well then I'll put them on my little grinder, and I'll use them over there until they're just so small I can't use them anymore. Now, the difference between this chop saw and the abrasive blade chop saw, a much bigger motor on this one, but much slower. So you can't go down and buy an abrasive blade chop, or a, you know, the abrasive blade chop saw, and put a metal blade on because it won't turn fast enough. You'll, you'll just burn up the motor. So I've already, I've already come in with my square and just checked the, the backstop against the blade just to make sure it's square, make sure my 90 degree is where it's supposed to be. It's not the best lineup there. You know, they don't have you know, an arrow and an arrow or a point and a point. So you can get a few degrees worth of variation on that fence. So if you get one of these and you cut and you find out, I'm always cutting at an angle, get yourself a square, check it before you do it. And what I found with the work clamp here, you know, they'll help hold your piece against the backstop is, don't kill it. Don't use both hands on it. It's not going to go anywhere. But if you over torque it, what happens is you actually pull the backstop up away from the table itself and you wind up bending the table and then your backstop, instead of being 90 degrees, your backstop is actually at an angle, and then you got all kinds of problems. So, you know, just, just enough, you know, just turn it in until it touches, and, you know, about an eighth of a turn, that's all you need. You might want to reach over and turn your sound down just for a few seconds, because it's loud. I was 
just like one handed, just the weight of my hand, no, no downward pressure at all. Very little sparks, you know, that, that's the good indicator. You know, if you see sparks coming off the blade, you're pushing too hard or the blade is dull and you're pushing hard because the blade is dull. So just the weight of your hand and just let it cut all by itself. Very little sparks, no sparks. And what you get is just a really nice, smooth, straight cut on both sides. You know, you could just put that right back together and weld it. You know, no grinding or anything. Well, so, except you want to chamfer it. Well, that all depends on how thick the metal is. You know, this one, yeah, I, I would probably bevel that edge just a tiny little bit, just to get my give myself a better weld down in there to penetrate all the way down through. Turn up the machine a little. You know, different ways to do it. A little slower. Probably a little bit noisier than the abrasive blades, but a much, much cleaner, straighter cut. So, you know, a great addition to have in the shop. What about kerf? Does one give you a better kerf than the other? Well, that's a very good question. You know, so they actually look to have right about the same amount of kerf. So they'll make the same, you know, width of cut, you know, the kerf of the cut, if you will. But the metal blade just does it just so much straighter, cleaner, smoother, you know. Great addition to have in a shop. So let me get back to what I'm doing. I'll see you next time.